Benvenuto, welcome to Cherry Hill Home Cooking. My name is Mark. Today, we're gonna use my Instant Pot. Um, I did, I was going, uh, uh, earlier in the week, I was thinking I would make corned beef and cabbage because I wanted to do something in the Instant Pot. Um, so I thought, oh, that'd be a good thing to do. Well, depending upon whether you're, when you're watching this, yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, 2023. So, um, and then Wade and I were talking about it and Wade pointed out that um, if we do the corned beef and cabbage today, nobody will see it until a couple days after St. Patrick's Day. So I decided we're gonna make baby back ribs. Um, now, this recipe I've gotten from a conglomerate of different things, primarily from the book that came with the Instant Pot. Um, I don't use this as often as I, I would like, or really should. Um, a dear, dear friend gave this to us um, a couple years ago. Unfortunately, she's no longer with us. I hope you're having a good time wherever you are, Pat. And um, I used it a lot when I first got it. I got a couple great recipes. Uh, I make a, the, not I make, but I got a recipe that I've made it. Uh, I got a recipe for this delicious mushroom risotto, uh, which Wade has never been a big mushroom lover, but uh, the first time I made that, it kind of started turning him uh, towards liking mushrooms a little more, and neither have I been. But anyway, I don't want to go on with a big long story because this is a fast, quick recipe. Okay, so now, this recipe will do either two or four pounds of ribs. I've got 3.5. All the measurements would stay the same. If you use four pounds, if you got 4.10, a little bit over, you're, you're good. The liquid measurements would stay the same. The only thing that changes is the cooking time. And we'll put that in the full recipe. Um, so, uh, as I said, you need about... Uh, three pounds uh, baby back ribs. We need some apple juice, all right? We need some apple cider and whatever your favorite um, barbecue sauce is. And um, this particular recipe in the booklet that came with the Instapot, uh, Instant Pot, didn't have, uh, didn't call for the liquid smoke. So um, some, it might be under kitchen bouquet, liquid smoke, um, but a couple other recipes I uh, saw in researching it do call for it. So I thought, oh, that might be good. So we're going to add some liquid uh, smoke to ours. And you want to use this very sparingly, sparing, sparingly. Uh, we're going to use only one tablespoon because um, that's powerful stuff. Um, so we're going to cook it in the Insta Instant Pot and then we're going to put it in the oven. Uh, we're going to take them out glaze it with our barbecue sauce put it in the oven so in total you can have ribs within 40 minutes all right so with that being said i'm gonna get everything out i'll get the ribs out of the package i'll get our um liquids all set up and we'll get it in the instapot see you in a bit okay guys there you can see there's the instapot all right so the first thing we need to do is we need to get our braising liquid i guess it would be um, warmed up a little bit. So I've got my apple juice, my apple cider, and I'm gonna put in a tablespoon of the liquid smoke. Now, I'm not gonna go a lot into the Instapot because I have no idea what kind of Instapot everybody has. Um, there's lots of different makes out on the market, so follow the directions of uh, the recommended manufacturing usage. Um, all right, so I'm gonna uh, put this, I've got my, um, on my end, it's called saute. So I've got that heating up on saute. I'm just gonna put that in there. All right, now as far as the ribs are concerned, there's a little bit of, this little membrane here that um, is a little tough. Um, now there's, there's a benefit to leaving it on is cause these get so, um, um, tender. It does, it helps them stay together a little bit when you take them out of the pot, but I don't particularly like it. So we're just going to take that off and we're going to throw it away and I'm going to wash my hands.
It's a beautiful day in our area today. It was in the 50s. It's just starting about 6 o'clock now. It's starting to get um, dark out or, start, you know, sun is starting to set. The birds have been up there happy all day eating. I don't know if we mentioned this to you guys before, but it was the beginning of the spring. We had a bear in the yard going after the bird feeders. Oh, he was so cute. Um, he never came back. He ate all the bird food, destroyed our feeders, and he never came back. All right, now, while that's heating up, let's talk a little bit about whether or not you need to cut this. Now, this would probably... And then I'll have to wash my hands again, so... I could probably fit this in as a whole. So that's the way I'm going to do it. I was going to cut it. If your, um, you know, if your rib is too big or you can't get them to roll up nicely, just cut it in half. All right. For this case, we will put it in like that. All right. Now I'm going to go wash my hands again and let that heat up. We'll be back when it's heated. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's starting to steam. It doesn't have to come to a boil, but you do want it to start to steam like that um how fast things change because when i left you just really literally a few minutes ago i said i wasn't going to cut this but then i thought ah i think it'll be easier to take out of the pot if i cut it so i did cut it in half all right so we've got our steam coming on and um the recipe says to put these the fatter side emerged I don't want to have to wash my hands again. <laughs> so the that's the fatter side or the thicker side, not necessarily fat. All right, and we'll just get in there. Now you don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to go down into the water, guys. This, this is gonna be fun to take out. So it doesn't have to necessarily be submerged. If it goes submerged, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Let me get that side a little evener. All right. Then the next thing to do is put your top on. <laughs> you can tell I use this a lot. Okay. Open, closed. Okay, so my Instant Pot's telling me the lid is closed. You want to, um, this, this is one thing that I'm sure is the same on all of them. You want to make sure that your act, um, um, what's it called? Sealing. You don't want to be under venting. All right, mine's got two sides vent, so we want to be under sealing because we're going to close that. And it's going to build up pressure. Now, on my Instant Pot, it is Instant Pot. You hit the meat. <laughs> you hit the meat stew. I think we gotta do. Um, did I not hit it? I have to do off. I'm sure. Where's the off button, honey? Cancel. Okay. <laughs> so, your I'm sure yours is probably the same way. Once it's steamed, you hit the. Uh, cancel okay so then we're going to do stew and now for um for four pounds or a little bit over you want to go for 32 minutes since we've got just a little over three i'm going to go to um 20 i'm going to say 20 because the, the recipe calls for it says between 20 and 25 so we'll go 22 since we do 32 all right so we're going to go for 22 minutes all right so um and mine says um normal less more okay it's locked itself or at least it's begun to warm up it says it's on we'll be back in 22 minutes okay we've come to our uh 22 minutes now it does take a little bit longer than the 22 minutes because you got to remember it's going to take a while for your uh, device to oh that's hot it's going to take a while for your device to um 
get up to pressure and everything. All right, so now on, on my particular model, once the um, time is reached that you put in, um, it goes into, um, I forgot what, how they refer to it. You can do what they call um, a fast release or a quick release. But anyway, now it's kind of counting down. So we're going to let this go on, you know, counting down, letting out the pressure slowly, I think. I'm a, you know, and it, that sounds plausible. <laughs> I used, used to use a regular pressure cooker all the time a few years ago. I don't know why I got out of uh, doing pressure cooking. But anyway, so we're going to let this count down to five minutes. All right. And then we'll be back and we'll open it up. Okay, guys, I took the time to look up the term that they use. So we're going to do what's called a quick release. Okay. And so all your um, pressure is still in there. Now it's counting down to what's called the natural release. So depending upon what your um, recipe calls for, you might let it totally cool down. And of course, follow your manufacturer instructions. Um, I, almost all of them have that little indicator there that it's still at full pressure. All right, now I know a lot of people, especially in the old pressure cookers are, are a little bit hesitant with pressure cookers. I know somebody that has got this fantasy that a plain, a pan pressure cooker blew up in her mother's face. Could have happened, I, I don't believe it. But anyway, her mother wouldn't be here probably still. But anyway, I digress. All right, so we're gonna do a quick, quick release. Now you, so we've, so on there we're unsealing. Okay, so that's keeping everything sealed in. And, um, you know, we're going to, when we when uh, we vent it, we're going to get a, and there's going to be a big uh, plume of um, um, steam come up. Yeah. I always throw a towel on it only because I don't, I'm afraid something's going to go up and hit my sailing. So um, put a towel over it. We'll let that steam start to come out a bit. And, and the steam is hot. You don't want to put your face over it, but see how, and that's pretty hot. All right, so what we're doing is just letting all the steam out. Um, and I'll have you guys know I burn myself. <laughs> I always burn myself. I, it's funny, every time I burn myself cooking, my reminds me of something my grandmother used to say. She said uh, when she died, she was going to go to um, right to heaven because she spent, you know, uh, she's burned herself so uh, long, uh, so often cooking. It was like, you know, her time in hell. So, <laughs> so when that... Um, all that pressure is released. I don't know how long it's going to take. But we'll just stand here and watch it. Wade can play some doo-doo-doo-doo music or something, whatever he does. Or fast forward. <laughs> now, we couldn't open. Technically, the, the device shouldn't let us open it. We're not going to try, but there should be some fail-safe locking mechanism on there that uh, you wouldn't be able to open it now anyway. I know it smells good, huh? I could, I could even smell it earlier. They smell good. So anyway, learn lesson. Do not touch the top of the pot. Now the side isn't as hot as the top was, but now our steam is coming down, which is good. The pressure is releasing. But we want to wait until this little indicator goes back down. Mm, in the meantime, you can smell the little... Oh! I've preheated my oven to 450. That's important, guys. And we got our barbecue sauce on here. Really? So, in the time it took to empty the apple juice and stuff into your measuring cups, put it in the water, let it come to a little steam, it's probably, you know, and then it, uh, the, the pot has to get up to pressure before it starts to count down. And it took probably about six, seven minutes to count down or to get up to pressure. And then it counted down from the 22 minutes we put in it. Um, and then as soon as you take them out of the pot, I got a cookie sheet, half a cookie sheet here with some tin foil on it just to facilitate um, cleanup and... Uh, I'm going to put it on there, slather some barbecue sauce on it in the oven five to ten minutes, and you're eating spare ribs. It's getting close, but... And 
I believe I heard it go down. No, hun? Did it pop down? Yeah, it did. All righty. I just walked over to, and grabbed a little bit of Pam. I'm going to spray a little Pam on here. Just to make sure we don't stick. All right. So, of course, with this, you don't want to open, you know, try to open it away from your face. All right. Are we ready? Let's see. We can cancel it. All right. Here goes. <gasps> it opened. Yay! Ooh, those are look good. Now I've seen some people be able to get the part, the thing to stand up on the edge. I know I've quit. I've not ever been able to get it to do that. So, all right, our ribs are done. And I think they're going to be very difficult to get out, but we're gonna try our best. Maybe try a good old spatula. Yep, one of our sides broke off, but that's all right. And we can move that there. Turning that over is going to be fun. <clears throat> now, I saw a lot of recipes. Some call for some um, had beer in them. Mine, mine's are not going to, that's going to break off, but well, maybe not. Some had beer in them, some had whiskey in them. My point being is there's lots of recipes out there that if you would enjoy trying, I'm sure. That came almost out whole, but. Turning it over to, they don't look that pretty right now, but once we get some nice barbecue sauce on there they're gonna look delicious all right so next part is really easy got whatever your favorite barbecue sauce is and start slathering them up All right, I don't think you want to watch me do this, do you, Wayne? Mm -hmm. Give it just. All right. What I'm going to do is I'll barbecue this side, and then I'll have Wade come back, and you can watch me make the other ones all fall apart. The other side, when I try to turn it over. See you in a bit. Okay, we got them sauced. So we got our oven 400 degrees. And five to 10 minutes, I'm gonna say closer to 10. And really what you wanna do is you wanna see that um, the barbecue start to um, 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 caramelize a little bit, get a little bit thicker, a little bit shiny. All right, we'll be back in about seven, eight minutes. Okay guys, we've been about Eight, eight and a half minutes. They look good to me. And I'm starving. Mm. So you can see the um, barbecue sauce has just uh, started to thicken up a little bit. Turn off the stove. All right. Now, the question is going to be, am I going to be able to get that on a nice platter so that we can give you a nice shot of it? But you'll know. If the opening shot of this uh, video has a nice saw, uh, platter of ribs on it, or if it has, uh, it's on a dinner plate. See you in a bit. <laughs> okay, we're ready to eat. Mm. Let's dig in. So we got our uh, spare ribs, our baby back ribs. 
Mm-hmm. We've got, uh, we got some, um, they have canned baked beans. They do have homemade um, coleslaw. Slots, yep. Mmm, okay. I've got some extra butter sauce there if you want. Mm, nice. I'm, I'm not going to pick it up because mm. I don't want to get barbecue sauce all over me. Mm, it's lost the bones and everything. Yeah. Mmm, that, mm. that the taste. Mm. That is so delicious. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Very good. Mm. Is it a world class barbecue? No, but it's very, it's, it's, it's a nice way. On par with some restaurants. Yeah. Well, I actually, I like that little smoky mm. flavor in that. Mm. Mm. Not bad at all. And That's delicious. It's amazing when you think of it. Mm. Really, if I just went from start to finish without stopping and stuff, this wouldn't take an hour to cook. Mm. All right. That's all I got. Oh, no. I have more to say. Yeah. As always. I hope you all enjoyed um, mm. watching along with us while we make dinner today. Mm. I hope you try it because it really is delicious. Very easy to make. Cheers. Yeah. Please like and subscribe and check out CherryHillHomeCooking.com. We'll see you on the next video. <laughs> Ciao. Bye. Mm. Mm. Mmm, so good. Oh, it is.